It's no accident that sounds like you're leveling up in a video game. 48% of 18 to 29 year olds have an online dating profile. Make them work for it. 45% of people say they're more frustrated with this form of dating than hopeful. There are so many people you can connect with. Should I swipe right? Swipe wrong. Swipe wrong. Setting the record straight on dating apps. Everyday people telling everyday stories of the swipe right world with your host, Chaos. Well, I know he had a good time. Ah, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and of course, good night. How's everybody doing? Hopefully you're doing outstanding. Welcome to the Swipe Wrong Podcast. I am that guy. Welcome to the uh, number one podcast amongst uh, people who think pickleball is some sort of dietary program. I am your host. Uh, Like I said, I am that guy. I am chaos. And um, we're here. We're here. We're bringing you another story. This is this is somebody's story. I don't think people quite understand when I tell them I want their story. I want your story. I want your dating stories. Uh, Jay and I want to know about you and want to know what you've gone through to get where you're at. The dating stories are the whole point of the show, but the dating stories don't make quite as much sense or have as much value if we don't find out who the heck you are to begin with. But I want everybody. So I'm hearing <clears throat> things like other podcasts. You must fill out an application like you. You have to uh, like there is a couple of people talking about, hey, I, I like to get, you know, what are they going to bring to the show? How are they going to make my show better? you you make our show better all right that's it that's all there is you bring you we got the rest you just bring you your story yourself so let us know actually i guess i should let you know let us know at swipe wrong pod at gmail.com 317-426-6616 and i I just i I, it's that easy like it it really is like dm me on facebook like it i had somebody uh who i'm going to talk to i think next week who said, wait a second, I can just come on. I don't have to fill out like some sort of survey. No, you don't. No, silly. What are you talking about? You be you, we'll be us. It'll all work out good. But what I would like you to do is like, follow, subscribe, send to your friends, let everybody know how we're doing. Uh, definitely rate us, let us know all the stuff. I uh, appreciate all the love that we're getting. Uh, we're uh, fastly approaching 100 episodes, which uh, we didn't know that was going to happen. Um, we all had... Uh, uh, a few ideas on what might happen, but uh, still still chugging along and gaining momentum. Anyway, uh, Jay is the producer of the show, uh, so he makes me sound good. He makes the show sound good. He puts it all together. Like I'm like, Jay, here you go. He's like, all right, I'm going to make it beautiful. And he does. So uh, mad love to Jay for everything that he does. Uh, and uh, this week, this week I thought was interesting because We talked to somebody who started in one country who moved to an entirely different place and is like getting their feet settled in this place and had one of the more unique dating experiences that I have heard. I was like, oh, okay." So uh, (laughs) I was like, what the fuck? Anyway, I hope you guys enjoy. So you know how it goes. Sit back, relax, put your feet up, grab your popcorn, get it buttered. If you want to get it buttered, throw some caramel on there sea salt, whatever it is, throw it at the person next to you just for fun because it's not going to hurt them and it'll start some sort of, you know, fun war. And if you're in uh, traffic, please don't hit that person next to you. Drive safe, be careful, uh, and enjoy Face Off. Disclaimer, the views and opinions expressed in this program are those of the speaker and do not necessarily reflect the views or opinions or any entities they represent. This podcast is about dating experiences. It is not to say one dating app is better or worse than another. So tell me your story on the apps, coach. What do you what's what's your world like other than some jerk having you come on a podcast cast with too short amount of time for you to get something to eat? <laughs> <laughs> well, you'll you'll love this. Let me start with this. I'm. Canadian born and raised, but I gave up my Canadian winters and I moved my ass down to the beach. So I live in the Caribbean. 
I live across the street from the beach and it's awesome. <laughs> All right. So now that we're besties, I'm going to come like sleep in your guest room. So just because you so, so, you're you're like DR, right? Isn't that where you are? I am. Yeah. I've been there once. Uh, well, no, I guess Punta Cana is where I went. And yep. so uh, is it uh, Rio Palace? I think uh, was was the hotel I stayed at. And um, there was a lot of inebriation. Uh, and then there was a lot of water play and there may have been vomiting. I can't confirm nor deny that there was, but God, it was beautiful. God, the place was so nice. How did you end up out there? You know, during the pandemic, I think during the first lockdown, when everybody was binge watching Caribbean life, I was too. And, and the guy kept saying, even you can live your dream on the beach. And I laughed every single time, <laughs> you know, whatever. <laughs> and then one day I Googled it and I was like, shit, he's not wrong. <laughs> no kidding. Here I am. Yeah, it took me down a rabbit hole. I did a lot of research and, you know, I looked what islands, what what was a good island as a single woman? Uh, where where would I feel comfortable and safe? And, yeah. you know, what are the easiest islands to get into, you know, in terms of immigration? And so, yeah, here I am. How hard was it? I mean, was it was it like uh, as seamless as you read about or, you know, was there like, it oh, shit, I wish I'd have known that. Unbelievably easy. No kidding. huh? And I think when I made the decision, yeah, I'm going to do this. It's like the universe said, ah, here you go. And it all no kind of shit. In place. like even so much as I, I made a declaration, I said in I will be living on a beach in 12 to 24 months. Uh -huh. And it was month 19 that I, I stepped foot in on the land here. Okay. But in that process, when I made that announcement and I said, I'm moving to Las Terrenas, Dominican Republic. And my cousin's husband reached out to me and he goes, oh my God, I've got an old like school friend who lives there. He's a real estate agent. I should connect you. So he connected oh, wow. me. You know, he found me a place to live and he's given me the lay of the land, right? He was my first contact here. And, you know, it just boom, boom, boom. Everything sort of happened very that is, easily. That is awesome. Like you you kind of like, all right, I'm going to a whole different soil. I don't even know if I'm going to Oh, wait, I know a real estate agent out there now. Oh, wait. Oh, God. Jeez, right, right carpet? Exactly yeah. That's like, exactly it. In uh, communication, how, like, do you need to Rosetta Stone the shit out of everything or what? Oh, heck yes. Google yeah. Google Translate is my friend. And yeah. I thought I would be okay. The funny thing is, is that I speak three languages fluently. I speak English, oh, nice. French, Italian. So I thought, okay, that will get me by because yeah. there are a lot of expats in this particular area, which is why I chose it, mm. from France and from Italy. And so I thought, worse comes to worse, I speak you know, one sure. of those languages, I'm good. Um, and I did speak Spanish, so I understand Spanish quite well. I just have a problem speaking it because I'll go into Italian. Okay. And okay. Okay. I, okay. Her, I, I felt like a deer in headlights because I was like, blink, 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 blink. I hear you talking to me. I'm pretty sure it's Spanish, but I'm not comprehending anything you're saying. And I I was struggling and I thought, what is right. wrong? Like, am I that far removed from my language abilities? Oh, wow. And <laughs> I talked to a woman here from Venezuela and I said, how do you find the communication here? She goes, oh, they understand me really well. And I said, and what about you? Can you understand them? She goes, oh, I don't understand a fucking word they say. <laughs> my awesome. first language. And I was like, oh, my God. So it's not just me. She's like, no, they don't speak Spanish here. They speak Dominican. And yeah. it's like, like they're right. There are yeah. a lot of colloquialisms and it, it's sort of a dialect of Spanish. So I've had to learn a whole new language and I'm better at it. I'm communicating. Uh, oh, sure. But yeah. You're absorbing it. Right. I mean, that's kind of, you know, when in Rome, you kind of have to kind of absorb it. Sink or um, swim. <laughs> yeah. Right. I mean, I got I got cerveza and baño. I'm set. I'm good. I'm set. I got it all figured out. I'm like, all right, beer bathroom. Good. All right, cool. Uh, yeah. The narrow shit. OK. All right. That's a whole different story. All right. There we go. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Uh, uh, do you love it? I do. I do. It's very different living here versus, you know, when you vacation, sure. obviously. Yeah. Um, you know, so you you learn things very quickly and it can be a little disheartening at times especially okay. trying to figure out what the culture is and 
how they view you in sure. the land as well, right? Like, yeah. There's there's a lot of things you have to acclimatize to. Um, so you know, there's there's some things I had to get used to. It, it, people people often say to me, "Well, what did you expect? You're living in a third world country, but it's not a third world country. Yeah. It's actually quite a wealthy developing country here. Yeah. It's just it's not." spread out amongst the people. So there's a lot of desperation and desperate people do desperate things. So there's a lot of theft. There's and, and I don't sure. mean theft as in they'll come and pickpocket you. I mean theft as in they'll look you in the eye, tell you something is a price that's five, six times more than what the locals will pay. Oh, I got you. And you'll Take catch advantage. them in a lie and they'll acknowledge that they've been caught and they don't care. Oh, it's a wow. one of a narcissistic country and that can be frustrating at times so you know that's you interesting. gringo prices and you accept yeah. it yeah Such so, as the i live in the midwest uh but i'm from southern california and uh so big hispanic culture or mexican culture you know everyone coming up i yeah. lived for two years in miami and i was like oh, i'll be fine miami's cool like i you know acclimate just like i do to the hispanic culture in los angeles no, 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 no. Totally different. Like it is like what I didn't realize is probably a smidgen of what you're facing. Like when I went to Miami, North Miami Beach is where it was. So it was right on the water. It was um, there was no Cuban culture adapting to American culture. There was you better adapt to the Cuban culture or you're not going to you're not going to fit in. And I didn't I didn't expect that going in, you know, it was my own ignorance, I guess, my own my own nuance, a beautiful city, most uninhibited place I've ever lived in my life, beautiful people, all that. But like I was definitely the outsider in America in that city, which is God, like a, a smidgen, like it's like you're walking through their version of Walmart and the overhead pages are in a different language. The whole communication is different in the, like you're the one looked at the outcast. That's a little bit, is that, you know, at least a glimpse of what you're going through? Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And yeah. what's funny is, I mean, for the most part, the expat community here is very supportive of each other, but there are some who have very strong views. And so if you express your frustration with something, their knee-jerk reaction is, we'll go back to your own country then. Yeah, sure. But, because that's like the, the knee-jerk reaction to have, like everybody out here. Like, oh, you don't like it here. Go, you know, the, the boat sinking and stuff. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. And that's not yeah. even the locals say. That's a, other expats, right? No There's kidding, a, really. I too, amongst some of the expats, because the French think that everybody's come here and they're ruining everything because they were here uh, first. The Italians are like, no, uh, we were here first. Right? Like, it's this whole... Okay, mentality and really when when i feel when somebody's expressing their frustration it's because if you feel like you're living 50 years ago like they're they're that far behind in infrastructure and and stuff sure time so you feel like maybe i can give them a bit of wisdom because i've lived elsewhere where they're yeah. more advanced yeah. let me help you catch up and yeah. Oh no no no! That doesn't it doesn't go well. <laughs> that seems pretend like they think. Do they see that as like pretentious and like you're a snob and like you you know more than us? You must be like or something along those lines. Or am I crazy? Well, the thing is that the Dominicans don't really care. They do things mm. their way. They'll do it mm. at their time. And the thing is, is that there's not definite schooling where trades are concerned. So okay. they learn by doing it. So okay. a mechanic learns by making mistakes so oh. you're taking in well i don't have a vehicle but people you know golf carts break down all the time why because sure. they well, they're not being fixed properly or you're you yeah. know the, youtube bro youtube oh yeah no i got you yeah, yeah. That's, that's how i fix everything so um <laughs> that i guess that leads to like kind of the concept of like what's dating life like <laughs> i haven't even <laughs> I haven't even attempted that here. And, oh, and it's yeah. funny because a lot of people uh, upon my arrival were like, you know, don't don't get involved with with a Dominican man. And their reasoning is is simply from seeing what's going on. And there is a big culture here where they will attach themselves to an expat because they can get money. 
They okay. have their rent paid for. They can, and they do. People will come, think they've fallen in love with somebody here, and they're like, I'll pay your rent for you because it's not expensive here. I'll right. I'll give you money. I'll send you money. And then they take the money and they take it back to their wife and three kids. Like that is common here. I'm not saying right. that. Right. 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 The hustle's any, real. You know, Right. It is. It is yeah. very real. And I know people who've had that experience and it happens both ways too. Right. right. Um, it's not just the men preying on the women. There, there are a lot of older men who have very young Dominican girlfriends sure. and they do it on purpose. And my, I've had some Dominican women tell me that they search for the older, <laughs> the older expat male <laughs> because they know they'll be taken care of. So, Expat. What is I, I I've gathered what that is, but will you define that, please? Yeah, an expatriate, somebody who gotcha. is from another country living. In oh, gotcha. The, okay, fair enough. Like I bet, like uh, fifty percent of the older guys right now are booking tickets. That's all I'm saying right now. They're like, oh wait, <laughs> younger girl, cool, no big deal. It's all right. My my wife's already taking all that anyway, so I might as well have some younger one take it too. And. Hang on, let me refill my Cialis. All right, I'm on my way. I got it. So yeah, yeah that, and it's very kind of common sense. for women here to have multiple children by multiple partners they've had. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the know? kid rocks. And, and that's the culture. I'm not saying that to to slander. Mm, I'm no. saying it that that's that's my experience. Yeah. Of people I've met, they'll tell me as much, right? Yeah. And yeah. that's their experience. So that's a pretty big it, leap of faith you took. That's pretty awesome. It is a leap of faith. Sometimes I'm like, what was I thinking? Yeah. But then I go to the ocean and cry it out. And I'm like, I'm good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. My tears are going seawater now. I'm not going. <laughs> yeah. Forget this frozen tundra that's up here in Canada. This is salt water. <laughs> exactly. That's exactly it. Oh, <laughs> poor me. Let me go to yeah. the beach. <laughs> Wait a second. I'm tossing the sand. So you're just getting over strep, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So being in Dominican and all that, how easy was it to get, uh, you know, medical and, and everything? I mean, just, just like a normal trip, like it would be in Canada or U.S.? Um, it's very similar to the U.S. So money talks where, okay. where the medical system is concerned here. Um, and I didn't want to go to a doctor. <laughs> okay. A lot of chaos in the medical system here as well. Uh, and yeah, that's so simply my experience of witnessing people I know who've been in accidents. One ended up dying. Another one oh, ended wow. up having to go back to Italy because his leg was so infected. They almost were going to amputate his leg from a, a broken leg from a wow. motorcycle Goodness. accident. Yeah. They're crazy drivers in this country. I lived downtown Toronto for 23 years and I drove in a metropolitan city, I do not want to drive in this small beach town uh, because sure. they are crazy yeah. on the roads. It's absolutely yeah. insane. Um, yeah. So my apprehension in seeking out medical, anything medical is simply because if you don't have to, then I don't want to. Yeah, and right. um, I do have insurance. So, you know, insurance would cover the majority of, of what I needed. But the good thing is, is that you can get pretty much any prescription medication over the counter here no oh, that's insane that's insane yeah. there's so, no regulation for it huh? yeah no there uh, wasn't and i knew i had strep from the many times i've had it in the past and i i contacted my neighbor and i said can you get antibiotics she's like yep so she called got them they were delivered to me boom in wow. less than where i had <laughs> they were delivered to you what do you uber eats your uh your uh really Pretty much that you yeah. can order almost anything. I ordered my uh, ring light and they delivered it. You can uh, order throat a, and they delivered it. Another twenty five percent of the audience is going, I'm gonna go get my scripts down in the DR right now. Here I'm going, I'm going, I'm going. Right? That's Dang. exactly it. Now, I mean, are the prices any better? They're they're about they're about the same. It's not like it, you're saving money getting right. any medication here. Although sometimes I wonder, is that my gringo price? <laughs> yeah, fair, <laughs> fair. Yeah. More because yeah. they know I'm the next fat, but um, I got them quickly and I'm feeling much better. So that's good. That's good. That's good. I, I so, you, so how much is rent down there? So I'm in a two bedroom condo in a okay. complex. Um, there's probably about a hundred apartments. They're not all full because they, they do vacation rentals as well. So there's probably, from what I'm told, there's 37 of us 
that live here permanently. Okay. And so for this two bedroom condo um, in this complex, it's well-maintained. I have two pools and I'm across the street from the beach. It's right. 900 US a month. <laughs> oh, and see you in a couple expensive. months. That's expensive for here. Is it really? Yes. Yeah. So if you don't want to live as close to the beach or if that doesn't matter to you, there's much cheaper. You can you uh, can find things as low as you know four fifty five hundred dollars a month. Safe area, you feel? Yeah, I feel safe, especially in my little complex because there's security and it's gated. So okay, they have to pass by the gate to get it. anybody has to pass by. Mm. So for the most part, I feel safe. I still yeah. put the bars on my windows because you never know. Um, yeah. and I'm on the front floor, so you know, yeah, a little you, you a little more precaution, and I'm sleeping better yeah. at night. Yeah. Um, but yeah, for the most part, I, I feel pretty safe. Yeah, I'd say listen to the Swipe Wrong podcast, not True Crime podcast. That would probably be better for you too. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Let's just just go there. Um, so you sat there up in Canada for a while, Toronto, beautiful city, wonderful area. Granted, the the winners are what the winners are. I've been there a few times, and I, I mean, it's an awesome city. I can understand you getting out. So what was dating life like up there and said, you know what? I got to get out of here. Oh, dating life. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Look, I don't mean to bring up any PTSD, but if I do, the ocean is across the street. You're good. You're good. Yeah, exactly. I'm good You're in a safe place. Yeah. I, I, you know what? I think, I don't even think it matters where you are. I, you know, because I've talked uh, to people from all over, we all have similar dating experiences. It's, it's tough out there. It's hard to find, you know, somebody you connect with and internet dating makes it so weird sometimes too, because it almost feels like you're in a catalog or you're selecting from a catalog. I don't know. Mm. Um, you know, those kids at Christmas back in the eighties and nineties, where you'd sit with the Sears catalog and you'd circle <laughs> yeah, totally. all the things you wanted. Totally. I feel like online dating is kind of yeah, that. Like, totally. Ooh, I know common. you're talking about. Yeah. Um, so you just, it's, it's like Forrest Gump. Life is like a box of chocolate. So is yeah, dating. Sure. You never know yeah. what you're going to get. No. Right. Something no. may look tasty, yeah. but it's a little <laughs> so, bitter. There's a surprise filling in there that nobody was counting on. <laughs> exactly. It comes with baggage. Yeah, for sure. For sure. So it's, um, you know, whether I was in Toronto, I ended up moving to my, my hometown, which is a small tourist town about an hour and a half west of Toronto, northwest of Toronto. It didn't matter where I was. It was the same everywhere you went. And, you know, I think it's just, it's hard to find people who are genuinely ready to settle down or to make that commitment to put the work in to date properly and to to get to know somebody. Um, and I, I still feel that way now. I have <laughs> That hasn't changed my mind. And yeah. I think... We had a discussion where I thought a while ago to write a book called Diaries of a Dating Queen because it wasn't just me having some of these experiences. Everybody I knew was like, oh, my God, you know what yeah. happened to me? Yeah. Right. It was that constant one up. You'll never believe this. This yeah. happened, um, you know, because there's just there's there's some craziness out there. I don't know. Is it the same where you are? <laughs> well, so it's funny, like uh, you mentioned that you were writing, you know, think about writing a book. And then I think I sent back to you. I had somebody on who wrote one called Plenty of Guppies and um, mm -hmm. she wrote it in, in verse. And it was it was great. It's a great episode. It's, she's just got a just a wonderful uh, way about her. So she was fantastic to talk to. She, uh, But uh, then like there was somebody else who uh, hit me up in Messenger, too, who was saying the same thing. I'm going to I'm about to write a book about all my experiences, too. <laughs> And I think it like, like, I mean, if the Bible is this big, the dating world is going to, you know, it's, it's going to be like, right, it's got its own section at Indigo. Yeah, it is. And I like, you know, I'm, I'm approaching, gosh, I, I, I'm approaching a hundred episodes of doing this. And I can tell you that, um, it, it, what I've learned, like my, what I see is way different than what I saw when I first started doing the show. People's experiences are entirely and entirely different, but it seems like, um, everybody when they walk into it it's like the eyes are wide open they're like oh my gosh uh, you know i have all these choices and 
they're they're a golden corral and they just want to put everything on the damn platter and then have 17 forks and shove them in their face and then yeah. their 15th time at golden corral they have one plate one fork and they're just kind of working their way through so it, it's almost like if you're like hey how long have you been on the apps and someone's like oh i just got on here like oh fuck this all right you, you go you go to your rave and you live your best life and and uh, <laughs> it, it, and because like it, it's gonna be a whole new sensory overload kind of world and if somebody like it's just like it, it really is like it, in my opinion and, and i'm no coach and i don't even claim to be one but in my opinion if the approach it goes in negative the whole everything will come out negative there's there's no way i'd People who listen to the show, yeah, they get people get, who listen to the show get, are going to get tired of me saying this, but I always say experiences over expectations. And then if you live that way, then the dating world will be much easier for you. Because if you go in and saying, I'm trying to meet my soulmate, you're fucked. That's, I mean, yeah. like, hopefully you do. Don't get me wrong, but don't have that expectation. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And it's, it's going in eyes wide open. Yeah. Yeah. You got to be ready for anything because you yeah. just never know what's going to. Yeah. It's going to come rolling down the aisle. And, and it may not happen on the first date. It may happen on the third date or fourth date. You know, I have, I have uh, a girl I talked to that on the first date, you know, the guy kissed her and she's a beautiful girl down in Texas. And, and uh, he said, hey, can you do me a favor? She's like, what? She's like, hey, can you do my laundry? And puts the laundry in the back of her car. And she's like, what the fuck? Uh, so, you know, just just weird random shit. You know, third date, a guy pulled a knife on a girl, you know. Another one, somebody, um, somebody faked seizures, you know, uh, over over a span of time until the guy figured out that she was actually faking them. So, yeah, there's just, uh, yeah, oh it's, my God. you have to powerless. Like the beginning, yeah. There, there's some, there's some episodes there. There's some, you know, they're just normal situations where people are lying about their height, which you know, guy exaggerates about inches all the time, right? Mm -hmm. um, so, <laughs> you know, uh, well, so I, I, my like experience that. is age. But people lie about age a lot. So tell me about that, because I've heard this often, but I want to hear I want to hear what you, I want. I'm going to shut up and listen. How about that? Well, just from my experience there, there were, you know, people on, on the dating apps who expressed interest and they're they're saying, you know, they're 46 years old. And I'm looking at their picture going. I would put the money down to say you're not 46 <laughs> like you look in your 60s like I I can understand you know five or ten years yeah you, you might look young for age even 10 years like some people do have that ability to look much younger than they are and and <laughs> also here here's another thing speaking of pictures why is it guys can't get a good picture in the world of selfies when we have the ability right. to take pictures ourselves why do most of the pictures on dating apps have these guys with this phone looking up their nostril and i can count their nose right hairs? right 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 100 percent. you know they're they're hiding their face somehow they've got their sunglasses and cap on driving a car or they show me pictures of their car like that's gonna matter <laughs> yeah totally like like i i let me you know it's funny you say that because there was a it must have been a meme floating around where um dude was saying what his age was and it was a current profile and he was taking a picture in New York. And when he was in New York, the background was the two towers. <laughs> yeah, those have been down since 2001. So, you know, it, it it's it, I mean, I, a recent picture. Yeah. Yeah. So you're kind of like going, bro, you totally outed yourself. I mean, like, I, I yeah. don't imagine it was photoshopped with the internet. You never know. It could have been, but I was just like, come on. But yeah, you know, and then. Uh, point of line, because it's going to get found out at some point. Yeah. So that's how you want to start any relationship. Yeah, totally. Like, and kind of and on my a couple of people, like I've said, like they've, they've ran into older guys and uh, they, they have to put in, in their minds, they have to put in that they're younger to meet younger women. And you're just like, well, that's kind of creepy because what if the younger woman doesn't want to meet the older guy? I mean, like, that's come on, man. Exactly it. Like, yeah. how does that serve anybody to lie right. about that? Because it will be found out. Right, right. 100%. So, and, and when it does, like, 
you know, but, you know, intentions are always unique. Like, is the intent to uh, date for a relationship or is the intent to go out to have sex? I mean, then, you know, Yeah, the, exactly. then, you know, the, the intent is for sex and maybe you already got it and they've moved on and uh, just shows what type of person they may, may be if they didn't disclose up front, you know, if they just kind Right. of nefariously did it. And that's always a scary thing. So, so Yes. that's fun. So tell me about your world. I mean, I, you have a beautiful microphone in front of you. Um, assume you're you're doing plenty of shows. I have been actually. It's fun. Yeah. I enjoy it. It's good to to meet new people and to see what people are up to. And this one caught my eye because I'm like, oh, I have a story. Yeah. <laughs> um. So I'm assuming we're we're talking about the story here, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Roll into it, however, however you want to roll into it. But I, I do dig the mic, by the way. That's a nice mic. Thank you. Thank You're you. welcome. I had to order it to get it here because it's so open. My condo is, it's a good size, but it's cavernous. There's not a whole lot Sure. creating sound or bouncing sound off Yeah, of. So like I hear it's very no echoey. echo. So Yeah, I don't hear any of that. So that one, that that's why one I got did the the job. microphone. Yeah, that's money. Yeah, I did a good, a good choice. Woohoo. Okay. Um, so this was years ago and it was a dating experience that I had had online And I, I wasn't newly single, but, you know, I'd been out of a relationship for probably about eight months at that point. Um, and I was ready to start dipping my toe back in and, you know, try again. And uh, it was a time in my life that was quite exciting because I was up for a lead role on Broadway in a Awesome. musical. And I, you know, as a Canadian being called to New York to be one of the final three for this lead part, that was a pretty big deal for me. That was like my, my four-year-old self was like, yay, Yeah, we finally got shit, here. that's awesome. And so this, this was a really exciting time in my life. And I, I was a teacher uh, at the time I was a classroom teacher. So uh, I, you know, I was maneuvering my classroom and getting called. And so this was my dream. This, I went to theater school for university. This was like it for me. And so it was an exciting time. And I had met this person online. We had talked a little bit um, back and forth. We had talked on the phone. And at the time, I, I wasn't really, I didn't really care if somebody had a profile pic or not. This was my my learning lesson. Um, not that the profile pics can actually tell you a whole lot. And as we just discussed, they can be doctored or it can be from 20 years ago. <laughs> Right, so, right. but he didn't have a profile pic and I didn't care. We were getting along. We were having nice conversations and he had wanted us to meet. And he had told me a story that he had been in a, a serious jet ski accident Oh, jeez. and he had gone headfirst into a cement hole. Oh, And, damn. you know, was, he, he came close to losing his life as a result. That's, that's a pretty serious injury. So, you know, that's something we talked about. I thought that was nice that he shared that with me and he was vulnerable enough to share that time in his life. And He was a father. He had two kids. And that was the first time I was dating somebody with kids. I was young at the time. I didn't have kids. Uh, I still don't have kids. But um, and so we had agreed to meet for coffee with the possibility of going out for dinner afterwards. If that first meeting, that blind date went well. So I always like to arrive early. I like to scope out the situation. I like to grab my coffee or drinks or like that's just me. I just like to Yeah, sure. I like to feel like I'm scoping out my area so that I Sure. know what's going on. Okay. And so I was waiting and he showed up and recognized me because I had a pro picture on my profile Sure. and he introduced himself. And I was shocked when I looked up to shake his hand because something he didn't tell me in his story about his accident is that he was missing a quarter of his head. Oh my gosh. So, and I don't care. I, like to me, it's not about looks. I I have like my ex-husband, for example, I never thought he was attractive until I started developing feelings for him. And all of a sudden, you know, that changed for me. So I wasn't really a big believer in looks mean everything. Um, 
but I wasn't expecting, <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. And I wasn't prepared for it. And there's a bit of shock, no matter who you are. Right. And some, it, it like, and, and I mean, he was, you could see where his head had hit the cement oh corner because he was missing his skull in that quarter of his head. And it was literally sunken in like a shelf and he was missing part of his eye. Um, oh, so my goodness. it was a visible impact. Oh, you know, yeah. My. So I was oh. trying not to act shocked because I certainly didn't want to make him. Oh, that's a hell of a poker face. It It was. And I was like, Ooh, okay. So once I got over that initial shock, I was like, Okay, so the shock is over. Now let's, you know, have a chat. Let's see what happens. Right. And so we we decided to go for dinner. So we went to a restaurant across the street from the coffee shop we were at. And we proceed to sit down. And he's talking about expectations and a relationship. And um, I, it, it was a little bit forward for a first date, but I was like, mm, let's see where he's going with this. So in, in the communication, he knew I had gone to New York. He knew I had had this audition. I was waiting to hear if I was going to get this part. And out of nowhere, he's like, you're a fucking liar. What? And I was like, I'm, I'm, I'm what? Like, I, I thought I misheard him. And he goes, you're fucking deceitful. Oh, my God. I was like, um, please explain. He's like, you say you want to settle down, but now you're going to go fuck off to New York. Oh, my God. I I was gobsmacked. I was like, oh, my God. Am I seriously hearing this correctly? And he's like, how dare you say that you want to settle down with somebody and you're just going to go fuck off and have the time of your life in New York City. And, oh. you know, you expect some guy to come, you know, crawling after you. Oh, God dang. <laughs> so I, I was like, well, I said, I'd like to think that the right person for me would know that this has been a dream of mine since I was a child and we would think to celebrate that because New York isn't Africa. It's an hour flight away. Like it's not far. And it's, it's not. It's not the best. Dominican Republic, we'll say. Right? <laughs> I'm like, oh my God, like you can drive it in 12 hours. It's not that far. Right. right. I was just so beside myself that this was his reaction. And this was a first date, no less, too. Oh my God. Wow. So, it, I, I thought, okay, so this this must be the end of this conversation, but it wasn't. He started putting his finger in my face. He's like, no way. You're, you're bullshit. And he was pointing his finger in my face, and that did it for me. Sure. I just said, this date is over. You've shown me all that I need. And I'm thinking... He had the nerve to call me deceitful, even though yeah. I told him about my audition. Yeah. I told him all of that before meeting him. And I'm like, you forgot to mention you were missing part of your head. Oh, yeah. 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 And like like you kind of alluded to it earlier, like just as a as a courtesy, like, hey, you know, like the shocked look like I like I'm sure it's. Obviously, he's, uh, you know, worried that if he tells you, you're not going to show up, I imagine. But like, I'm like, look, somebody dislocates their finger. I'm like, man, that looks freaky to me. Someone's missing half their head. I'm 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 struggling. I'm I am struggling to hang out. And the fact that that uh, that you poker faced it and did that's that's uh, speaks volumes about you. Let's say that. And then he says, you're a fucking liar. You're deceitful. Oh, my God. Yelling at me. Like, even the waitress, she looked over at me sort of as a, like, do I need like, to are you, okay? are you okay? And I, I sort of yelled in the restaurant, huh? Yeah. Yeah. He was yelling at me. And um, I just I thought, oh, 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 my. And this was a first date. I was like, wow. If it's this tent on the first date. Yeah. This is why you haven't gone to a second date with other people if yeah. if 
Like, I just felt like he had this chip on his shoulder and he was taking out his anger on the, of the world onto me. It was right. Yeah, it was the right. finger in the face that did it to me. Yeah. Right. Like, well, that's a trigger for so many, me. too. That's right? a trigger for People so many. People can have their opinions. I'm I'm good with that. But when you start invading my space and you start slinging accusations and you know nothing about me, you were just getting to know each other. So I yeah. I pick myself up oh, and I girl. Said, is over that and sucks. I'm sorry. Like for a lot of reasons, I'm sorry. One, you're connecting. You know, you're you're vibing. You're like, all right, let's see what happens. And like, you know, like expectations like we talked about are one thing, but you're still hoping for at least a good time. And then you get in there and you're like, OK, well, uh, never not never going to go out with somebody who doesn't have a picture again. Like some people, you're just like, all right, maybe he's missing teeth, not half his head. That's a big thing. Jeez. Yeah. Like he loved by Braille is a little different. Um <laughs> Uh, and, and I can't read your head. Um, so, so, let me run uh, my hands through your hair. Yeah, yeah, through your hair. You're gonna have to do his back. Uh, you're gonna have to run your hand down his back for it to run it through his hair. Um, so sorry, I could clown all that. That's that's one of my. Uh, but and then then to just be so confrontational on a first date too, as opposed to like, uh, I mean, so many of us like to live in a gratitude moment as opposed to having a great time with with a great person. It was it was straight like, oh my god, you're gonna be on Broadway. <laughs> That's awesome. By the way, did you get the part? No, I didn't. I didn't. <laughs> did you get a part though? Like, were you understudy or anything? No. Okay. No. And well, at the time, they explained to me too because this was uh, 2005. So you okay. know, it was in the time of everybody was super cautious because of 9/11. Mm -hmm. They're like, you know, it, for for Canadians to come across the border mm. to be Broadway, it has to be in the lead position. Sure. Okay. And to justify getting you a visa and. Okay. So it's very disappointing. I was also up for the part in Toronto as well uh, okay. for the Toronto show. Um, and I didn't get that. And then I got called to New York. So I there was a casting director in Toronto at that time. She said to me, she goes, go and show them in the in New York the biggest mistake they made in Toronto. That's awesome. It was very sweet. Yeah, it was great. Yeah. And it, I didn't get the part and I'm okay with that, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, obviously it wasn't meant to be. But yeah. the experience was amazing. And, you know, to that's awesome to be able to say I got that opportunity. And I I auditioned for Bernard Telsey himself. So that was he's a big that's cast cool. director for Broadway. And that was exciting for me to call my theater school friends. Say, You'll never cast. Yeah. Like um, so life it, happening for you, not to you. Right. You know, mm -hmm, exactly. Yeah, exactly. That's pretty awesome. That's really awesome. All right, so let me go back to douchebag. That's awful, by the way. So, like, as awesome as the the experience was for for possibly getting on Broadway, that's just an awful date. I'm so sorry to hear that. I mean, like, I, obviously, good thing it was first date, not third date, and all that. But but wow, that had to be like, all right, I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to stream all six seasons of Game of Thrones and not leave my house for a while or something like that. That was exactly it, and that was yeah. the moment I vowed. You know there has to be at least a picture and, yeah. and not, not for vanity reasons. <laughs> Just see if they have their whole head. Yeah. If sure. Right. Yeah. And, and it, it wasn't even so much that he was missing part of his head. It was the fact that he was an asshole. <laughs> right. Like, <laughs> when, when, when asshole is here and missing part of your head is here, that's a real asshole right there. Let me just say. That's exactly <laughs> it. I just, yeah. I was so beside myself. I could not believe it. Oh. Uh, nobody would believe this if I told them. Like, it's just one of those I, things. I believe it. I believe it. The, the shit I've heard, I absolutely believe this. And oh my exactly. God. Oh gosh. Was there good dates out there? Tell me you had a good date out there somewhere. I had what? Oh, a good date out there somewhere. Oh, yes. I, oh, okay, I've had good, a lovely good, date and good, I, you good. Know, I've been fortunate to meet. Don't. And you know what? They don't work out, but I meet some really great, interesting people. And I think yeah. that's the expectation we should have. Get out there and just connect with somebody. It's not exactly. whether it's going to end up in marriage or like this guy already, for some reason, had us in a full time relationship and I was screwing off on him like. I, it was such a bizarre experience with his 
you know, yelling in, yeah, in my face. Yeah. yeah. Like, in the restaurant, loud yelling in the restaurant to where the waitress was wondering if you were okay. Like yeah. on the first date, on any date, like, come on, like, like usually like, like if I'm mi- if I'm missing half my head, I'm not trying to draw attention to myself anyway, but that's evidently that didn't come through. Oh my goodness. Yeah. All right. Oh that's girl, that's unfortunate. That drive me to the Dominican. Well, so would, <laughs> so would the mail showing up late though, too. Let's be honest. So, you know, Oh, the mail's late. I got to go to the Dominican. Fuck this place. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, awesome. Um, that's cool. That's cool. Like, thank you for sharing. Like you mentioned something you had, you're like, I have a story and I didn't see this one coming. So a lot of times, like I'll be all of like, I don't want to know. So yeah, it's an op that I did not see this one coming. So, oh my goodness. I pre- Is there any other ones you want to share? Cause I don't want to miss out on anything else. I don't know if anything can top that. Yeah. I don't know if I have anything that tops that. I mean, I dated no, of course. Somebody and, and we really clicked and we spent, you know, four or five days consecutively together, really getting to know each other. And he left me on, on a, a Thursday and then called me or no, I'm sorry. He left me on a Sunday and like left my house to go home. He had to go to work and called me the Thursday of that week. Didn't hear from him all week, which I thought was strange to say, um, you know, I left your house on Sunday and I went on this date and I want to see where things go with her. <laughs> I was like, oh my gosh, what? We just spent like five days together and, you know, connecting, getting to know each other, you know, all this time. And he has since come back into my life. He, uh, he did reach out to did. me and he's like, I was stupid. I'm like, yep. Yeah, 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 yeah. And now I'm in the Dominican. So take care. Have a good one. Okay. Uh, yep. And, and he was, you know, can you, can you ever forgive me? Absolutely. I can forgive you, but I won't date you. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. If that's what you're insinuating. Yeah. Yeah. No, no. You might do it again, bro. You might spend five more days and you're gone again. Yeah. So, so, uh, where can people find you? You have Insta? Yeah. What, what, what do you want to, what do you want? I'm on all the, the social media. Well, most of the social media, cause I'm learning there are some ones I've never heard of before, but, right. um, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok. Uh, I just started a YouTube channel. I'm actually a, a grief coach and a psychic medium. So I, I help people through grief and I, I lost awesome. my brother to suicide in 2013. Oh goodness! And I went through a big upheaval. So, you know, I want to show people that they can feel stuck in grief, but I want to show them it is possible not just to survive it, to thrive. And so my goal is to walk people through that grief journey. And so I just started a YouTube channel called Good Grief and oh, nice. talking about my own story and what that looks like and how messy grief can get and how we lose people unexpectedly, but we also find ourselves in that process. And, you know, not just talking about the doom and gloom of grief. I want to acknowledge that there's a beauty in it as well. There's a growth that happens. Grief will, is forever. It's a life sentence, but it's something that we we grow around and we learn a new normal um, and that it's okay to feel joy again and it's okay to live your life. And that's what got me to the beach, right? Yeah, I feel like yeah, my fair. brother's death saved my life <clears throat> in a lot yeah. of ways. That's awesome. That's fair. It's, uh, it's heavy. And uh, Sorry, I, I didn't mean to bring. bring no, 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 no. It's well, Mother's Day today is, is when we're recording. My mom passed away in 2013. So Mother's Day in uh, three days that are hard. Mother's Day, her birthday, and then uh, um, the day that she passed. Those are three days that I'm like, ah, oh, I'm going to watch Shirley Temple movies and eat M&Ms because that's what she loved to do. I'm not reading a damn Roma- romance novel, though. I'm, you can't sign me up for that. That's not going to happen. No Danielle Steele up in here. Um, oh, cool. Yeah, right. I'm not even. No, that was. Yeah. So anyway, but yeah, like like you learn. Um, so. All right. So I'll share. My, so uh, she died in 2013. My grandma died in 2012. My aunt died in 2011. Great grandma mm-hmm. died right between all those two. And then went through a divorce. So then you're you're suffering losses of everything, and yeah. uh, and you go through like like the grief cycle. It's it's it the, it's the fucking spin cycle on steroids. Uh, yeah. So yeah. it totally is a new like it's like it's it like it, and I think my own opinion, and I know they're there for a reason. But antidepressants, I think, are the worst thing on the planet. 
Um, and mm. it's, yeah, it's just my take because like yeah. it, it stops it. I felt like it stopped me from figuring out how to get my way out of depression. Uh, like it, it, it was almost like a beta blocker. Like you're not going to feel anything. I'm like, all right, I need to feel this. I need to get through it and then figure out what's next. But that was just me now. Um, see, for me, people... it stopped me from taking my own life. Well, see, there you go. Like it, and there's two different, like they're there for a reason, like I said. So that's amazing that it, that, mm -hmm. uh, it, it was there for that. Well, then, uh, you know, you cycled your way out of it, which is just the, the most amazing thing on the planet. Like once you get there, <laughs> you're a block from the beach, you know? So like, yeah. you're, you're living your, you, you work your way through it to live your best life. Right. Yeah. That's, and yeah. if anything you learn in grief is that life is short, life is fleeting. It can be gone in an instant. And if we don't take the opportunity to do the things we, we want and to go on that date and to travel to these places we've always wanted to see. Well, when are we going to do them then? Yep. 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 Right? Uh, one now of the things is the time, I, not tomorrow. Yeah. One of the things I like to say when it comes to like this topic, this area of conversation is stop acting like you live twice. Uh, so if you, if you do that, yeah, then, then that. you'll be much better off. Like, it's like, I'll mm -hmm. do that next week. Uh, why, why are you going to do it next week? Why wait till, mm -hmm. Why wait till January 1st for a New Year's resolution? I'm going to make a March 15th resolution or something. You know, it's mm -hmm. January 1st. It's like, God, it's got, it's got the cool. It's like the cool kid in class. Come on now. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Lead it. Lead it. Don't follow. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So Good Grief is your YouTube channel. It is. Yeah. Is that your Insta too? Or, or what's your Insta? My Insta is my name. Diva underscore Neely underscore. Okay. So okay. either you'll find me at Good Grief or Diva Neely. Okay, perfect. I want to make sure you thank you for sharing your story. I appreciate it. Thank you. This was fun. Good. I'm glad to put a smile on the face, even though you're like, I can go outside and get one, Jerk. You enjoy your cold. Okay. I can. Okay. Let me go. You know, I'll think about this when I'm enjoying a beverage in the pool tomorrow. <laughs> you're going to have to send me a picture. <laughs> I, I <will. laughs> At the ocean. You're like, ah, Jerk. Thank you for being along for the ride on the Swipe Wrong Podcast. The show is produced by Jay Pelham. You want to reach out to us, we want to hear your story. 317-426-6616. Make sure to text, leave a voicemail, we'll get back to you. Shoot us an email at swipewrongpod at gmail.com. We are on Facebook, Insta, Twitter, YouTube. We are definitely out there. I am the host of the show. My name is Chaos. And please make sure to take a listen to us next week because the saga, it continues. <laughs>